Recording in progress. I want to thank the Lord again for giving us an opportunity to be here and learn a few things. How many ha have learned something today? Not through me, but other speakers. Yeah. And uh, I, I pray that you may continue learning and unlearning. We are told that uh, what the people have been learning in years, we'll have to learn in weeks and months. Eh? Because we do not have time anymore. And so our comprehension of things should be double. We should do more effort to understand the things that we ought to understand. I'm standing here for the prophetic insights. If you don't love history, then you may take a pillow as early as possible. The problem with history, you have to read. You don't have to hear somebody telling you something. You have to read yourself. The problem is that uh, we are having what we call an identity crisis. What? An identity crisis. Do you know we have an identity crisis? Or we do not understand what is an identity crisis? Young girl, you come from Uganda. Oh, let me not speak to this girl. She, she may be offended. I, let me speak to mama because I know her very well. Do you come from Uganda? What if today I told you you come from Kenya? What if I prove? She's not sure she's from Uganda. That is an identity crisis because she's telling me to prove I'm from Kenya. What if I prove she's from Kenya? Will she still stand with she's from Uganda? She won't, is it? And that is how the enemy comes in and the true information is taken away and we remain with the false. And so we are suffering an identity crisis because we don't know who we are. The enemy has snatched what belongs to us and has given us something. And because some few things here and there have been put together, we have come to believe that is the real thing. And unless we find back our identity that we lost, we are not going to really understand the things at stake and the issues at stake. And so, in this prophetic chain, uh, I like us to go to restore us to our identity. I told you that we have to be saved and converted in this meeting because we are not living in ordinary times. We are living in a crisis and we need a solution for our crisis. Now, same thing with prophecy. Maybe uh, I'll speak about this. Daniel. I want to start in Daniel chapter one, but... Uh, uh, I'll see as the Lord leads me as we go along. Prophecy itself, we are told that uh, we have a more sure word of prophecy, therefore take unto heed like a light shining in dark place. Now, many people don't comprehend we are in darkness, is it? So do they need light? If you are not in darkness, do you need light? That is the Laodicean condition. They are blind, but they are saying they are seeing. Seeing they have eyes, they see not, and ears they hear, not. The problem is to accept that we are in darkness and then we shall be able to be given the light. And so we have a more sure word of what? Prophecy, so take heed. Because it's like a light shining into in a dark place until the day dawns. Until the day dawns. Which day? 
the day of the Lord itself, is it? And uh, in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18, somebody to rush there quickly. I wonder so when we open the Bible, we open so quick as if it's a grand price to be won. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. The path of the just is like what? Enter not into the path. Okay. Proverbs 4.18. Is that the verse? The path of the just. But the path of the just is as the sign in life. That sign is known no, on the path. Yeah. The path of the just is like a shining light that shines even unto the what? Perfect. Perfect day. And so we are waiting for that perfection, not after, but before Christ comes, so that we may be on the path of the light, not on the path of the, the darkness. And uh, we have to remember, don't forget this quote in uh, 1 SM 406, paragraph 1. Uh, we are told that... Uh, We do not understand the time that we are living in. We do not have to take it in. The trials and the attitude of the children of Israel has been shown to me again and again to illustrate the position of the people of God. The Trials and the attitude of the children of Israel prior to the first coming has been shown me, has been shown me again and again to illustrate the position of the people of God just prior to the second coming. There were a series of things that happened prior to the first coming of Jesus Christ. They are coming out of Babylonian captivity to the time of their rejecting of the Messiah. You have to understand the series of events that led to the rejecting of the Messiah. Because people will not just wake up today and say, I don't love Christ. Is that what is going to happen? We are told how darkness came upon them slowly by slowly until they could not comprehend what was truth and what was error. And then in the midst of everything, they rejected Jesus Christ in the midst of the week. And then at the end of the week, they stoned Stephen and their probation was closed as a nation and only individuals could remain to be saved. And if we don't understand their history and follow the chain very well, we may just be repeating the same chain of the prophetic events. And then when we come to the time of anointing the king, we find that we don't have it. And so prophecy is like a light shining in dark place. unto the perfect day that the just man may be able to comprehend. The good thing when it says that just man, in Daniel we are told that uh, and the sanctuary shall be justified, that is you and me shall be justified. Everything shall be restored in its rightful place. And so we have to be looking at these things. And so I, I want to give uh, the, the people who are approving the people coming into Zoom. Try to do your work. And so there, there are some things in the book of Daniel chapter one that starts happening and uh, God is so merciful. First of all, I want us to go to 2 BC 1040 paragraph two. Let us start from there as we go to the book of Daniel chapter one. 2 BC 240, uh, 1040.5, I think. Uh, 2 BC. That is uh, 2 BC, 1040.5. I want you to check this. What started to take these people into Babylonian captivity, okay? I, I know that thing is not very clear, but. Uh, we are praying that the projector will reach here in time so that we don't lose a lot. Why did the Lord permit Jerusalem to be destroyed? 
uh, I'll share with the, the people so that they may be able to see this. Why did the Lord permit Jerusalem to be destroyed by the fire the first time? Can we see the board? Let us read together. Why did he permit his people to be done what? Be overcome by their enemies and carried into heathen lands. You can fall along your phone and we read together. It was because they had failed to be his missionaries and had built walls of division between themselves and the people around them. Continued on, we read, the Lord scattered them that the knowledge of his truth might be carried to the world. If they were loyal and true and submissive, God will bring them again into their own what? Into their own land. This is 2 BC 1040, paragraph 5, also found in General Conference Bulletin, April 7, 1903. Failure to be what? To be missionaries. Led them into the events of captivity, is it? Do we know that is why Israel went into captivity? For it is something new. It's not new, is it? Yeah. Now, why do you, what do you think? If this is the reason why they went into captivity and the trials and the attitude of the children of Israel prior to this first coming has been illustrated again and again to do what? To show the, at the position of the people of God prior to what? The second coming. If this is what made them go into captivity, do you think also the modern Israel can go into captivity? For what reason? For which reason? Failure to be missionaries. The poster is of the truth, is it? So, I don't want you to carry your hand. How many are missionaries here? And how many are not missionaries? So, which kind of captivity are you waiting? Do you think we shall ever have another captivity that will come out from? The last captivity, no one is coming from it. You are either taken or you are left. Is that what the Bible says? Yeah. And so if you don't understand your history and the prophetic chain of events, you are bound to be lost while thinking you are saved. So, you little children, what are you studying in school? To be what? Good missionaries. Sit beside your parent and ask your parent why he is taking you to school. We have parents and their children here. Or they have sent them somewhere and they are here. You must understand one thing that something was happening in Israel, and we are about to read it, that is happening today, and when the time reaches, these children will never be able to stand to start the book of Daniel chapter one once again. Do you know that? And so let, let, let us try to read what um, happened. And it is so interesting as we go through this history. Now, I want to make an apology, but not an apology. You are not here to be condemned. Amen? Are we together? I don't know you. Do I know you? Should I come all from the way from Kenya to condemn you? Do you know what is happening in Kenya? You don't know, is it? So how can a man from Kenya whom you don't know come to condemn you? We are not here for condemnation, okay? But for education. So that uh, we may not be found wanting you know the work of the watchman. What is the work of the watchman? Stand on the wall 
and do what? Sound what? A trumpet alarm. If I tell the wicked man that you will die in your sin and the watchman doesn't go to tell the sinner, he will be overtaken in his sin and the blood will be upon who? The watchman. But if the watchman cometh and tells the person you are going to die, then if he die in his sin, the blood is upon him. And so I'm here to pass information so that uh, we may not be found a people who are perishing because of the lack of knowledge. We want to perish because we have the knowledge. And do you think that is crazy? So we must choose what we shall do with the information, okay? Introducing the book of Daniel chapter 1, let us open your Bibles, open your Bibles as we go through this. These are prophetic insights, and we are not just here to read deaths. We are here to see the practical implication of the prophecies. I may not even give you deaths, because we have gone through the book of Daniel as many times as we can. I may not come to deaths and kingdoms and all that stuff. I want us to glean in these books uh, what the Lord wants. In the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and, and, and unto Jerusalem and besieged it. Read more about that in PK 479, if you are writing down, if you want to know the history well, very well. PK, that is Prophets and Kings, page 479. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hands with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shina, to the house of his God, and he brought the vessels into the treasure of his God. Verse 3. And the king spake unto Ashpen as the master of the eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel and of the kings of the seed of the princess, children in whom was no blemish but well favored. Now, I want you to look at these children because I'm going to preach right now or to teach about family life in the prophetic insights and how it relates to our time. Children, these children had their mothers and fathers or uh, they fell from the sky. They had their parents. So look at these children. Children in whom was no blemish, but well favored and what? Skillful. Skillful in and cunning in and understanding and such had ability in them to stand in the and whom they might teach the learning of the tongue of what? Yeah. Now, where did they get the skills? And all wisdom? Where did they get the, all the wisdom? And the knowledge of all sciences? Where did they get it? Somebody says from true education, somebody from home. You have to understand what was happening at that time they were taken into captivity. Let, let, let us visit the history of Israel once again. Israel gets into apostasy during the time of Jeroboam. And what happens? The Lord splits the kingdom into two kingdoms. That is the southern and the northern kingdom. The northern kingdom comprising of 10 tribes, which is called Israel, and the southern kingdom comprising of two tribes, that is Judah and Benjamin, and it's called Judah. And when the king comes, Actually, in this time of apostasy, there is a remnant which is called Judah. He first takes all Israel into captivity. And so, these children were from the tribe of Judah. And they were from the families of the priests, some of them. And so, while the Israel was in apostasy, there was families that preserved the truth and that truth was to train up their children so that they may be able to stand when they go into captivity because it was a must they go into captivity. 
it is not a must we go into captivity. Sometimes you give, uh, you start presenting Daniel chapter one on true education and you touch the true education and people say, oh, those three Hebrew worthies got their education in Babylon. How true is the statement? There's nothing like that. They got their education in, in Babylon. They went there having all wisdom, having all knowledge in sciences, and what else? Skillful in wisdom, cunning in knowledge, and understanding in all sciences. And one thing, they were ready to stand before the king. Have you ever noticed that? And soon our children are going to stand before the councils. Do we know that really? The history of Israel will be repeated in our time. Soon no one knows how soon all these church members you are seeing here, including myself, will have to stand before the king. Just pray you die. Which is better? You want to live or you want to die? <laughs> Now, if you don't know what you are going to tell the king, you should pray to die. Because you are going to be swept by the magicians of Babylon. Do you know that? What is happening in Revelation chapter 13, the false prophets, they are going to sweep the entire church. Just like the magicians were about to sweep the whole nation of Israel with their uh, magic. We, we are not living in normal times. People should be preparing to stand for truth. Just like those three Hebrew worthies were able to stand at that time. But there should be a foundation that should be laid. And I want us to see this foundation. You follow it in your phone. If uh, uh, the blackboard is or the projector is too deep. This is coming from uh, the seer, the story of Daniel the prophet. And uh, I'm starting from page 14. And so they went into Babylonian captivity. They failed to be missionaries. I want you, if you are a parent right now, to start asking yourself one question. Are you training your child to be a missionary? Because if the child fails to be a missionary, he will go or she will go into Babylonian captivity without knowledge, without wisdom, without learning of sciences, and unable to stand before the king. Are we together? Is that a threat? That is not a threat, that is the reality. Are we together? Now, how can you train the child when you yourself have not trained yourself? Are we going to manage? God had an object in calling the Jewish nation to separate themselves from other nations of the world. It was that his people might stand before the world as light bearers, as beacon set on a hill. Israel was to send beams of light to the world. The plan of education made known to Israel. Please, there, there are always questions after this. Somebody ask you, show me where there is a school where they teach true education. Don't ask such a question. Are you listening? After reading this, don't raise your hand and ask, so give me a school where is teaching true education. Where is true education taught? People think that uh, education is what people get in, in school. How do you define education? Can we define what is education? That is another version of education. There is an education according to inspiration. That is now that is the true meaning of education in a worldly system. Yes, brother. Yeah, that is one of the meaning of education she gives. Acquiring knowledge for the service here below and after. 
The second definition of education, she tells it in the book of education, is the harmonious development of the mental, the physical, and the spiritual. Do you know what is the third one? It is what remains after you have left school. So what is remaining in these heads, in my head after leaving school? Huh? What is only there are poets of Plato, who else? The poems of Shakespeare. What else do you do you have, go with home after school? What else? Tell me the things that remain after you leave school. It's good nothing was left when you left there. So you are you you are in a better position because we can put something there. Is it? Yeah. But education has these three definitions that she gives. The training for the service here below and above, okay? And then the harmonious development of the spiritual, the mental, the spiritual, and the physical. And the third one, what remains after someone leaves school? So after learning all we learn, are we able to do service here below for God and above? Mark on your list if you have a list of it. Are we together? Number two, ask yourself, am I developing mentally, spiritually, and physically? If you have a problem with any of the three, know that you are in trouble. Know that I am in trouble. And then if what is remaining here is only vanities of the world after leaving school, then I'm in trouble, a big trouble. And so the plan of education made known to Israel through her prophets was the means of keeping that light burning. When his, this God-given plan was neglected, the light as a candle deprived of the life-giving oxygen burned dim. Then it was that the nation was pre pre pressed upon all sides by the foe. There is a Hebrew maxim Maxim, which says that Jerusalem was destroyed because the education of her children were done what? Neglected. Now, is there a possibility that the, our church will be destroyed because the system of our education has been messed up with? I think the brother who is carrying, who is doing true education will be able to touch on these things, not just to tell people to leave. You know, we are in hurry to tell the people, take the children out of Babylonian wood, schools, and we take them where? Into another Babylon. You, you, you hear people say, agriculture is the ABC of true education, amen? And then they say, we are going to implement true education. The children are going to farm from morning to evening. I wonder what kind of true education is this? How do you understand agriculture is the ABC of true education? You have children who doesn't know anything in English. They have no any education in any science. They have nothing apart from holding agenda and planning, planting cassava and bananas and in our country, maize and beans. We are implementing what? True education and agriculture is the abyss of what? True education. And then these children devoid of any education, we need people in publishing houses, do we need? We need electricians to go and do and fix solars in the countryside for country living, is it? Do we need plumbers to do our homes? Do we need carpenters to make our chairs? Do we need people who are actually so fit in embroidery, they are so fit in symmetry, and they are so fit in clothing industry that they will be able to sew dresses that are Adventist dresses? Do we need such a people? But agriculture is the abyss of what? True education, and we must farm from morning to evening. We are implementing what? From Babylon to? To Babylon. Don't do such a thing. 
I recommend leave your child where the child is so that he may get a salary and help us proclaim the gospel. If you are not going to take the initiative of teaching true education. Now you'll never take an initiative of teaching true education if you don't know what is the true education itself. And we have just given the definition. So if we neglect this, we will be having, right now we are having problem with media here. What if there was a skilled person to run this media? We won't be moving up and down with these computers and microphones, is it? Yeah, somebody will be somewhere doing his own things. We need children who are learned more than the world is learned. Do you understand that? Not learned like the world. We don't need children learned like the world. We need children who are learned more than the world. And so the prophecies of Daniel and the connected history prove the, tr this, uh, the truth of this maxim. It may be added that the Jews were restored to Jerusalem as the result of proper education of a few Hebrew boys. That the children of Israel were restored to Jerusalem to rebuild it by a few educated Hebrew boys. And you can read the book of Hebrew, uh, Ezra, and it says that Nehemiah, uh, Ezra, purposed in his life to restore the true education in Israel and to teach about the law of God in Israel. We are told that during the time of Ezra, you could think that the law had been given the second time because it came with freshness that the children of Israel needed at that time. Continued on. The prophecy was placed on a record and repeated again and again by Jewish mothers as they taught their children. Who taught these children? Hey, mothers, wave. Wave, wave, wave. wave. You can't wave right now. No, there is no mother here. We only have... <laughs> Don't force them to be mothers. You, you know, people can be mothers without knowing their mothers. So don't force anyone to be a mother here. At the feet of the mother, these four boys in Babylon learned all they can learn to remain steadfast in Babylon. Not because they were being sent there willingly, but the captor took them captive. So don't go in Babylon on your own, okay? Are we here? Don't take yourself in Babylon. Did they take themselves in Babylon? If you find yourself taken in Babylon, then do all you can to stand in Babylon. And if there is a chance, come out of her. Is it? Because even after they had went into Babylon, there was a voice that was heard, 70 weeks you have to leave Babylon, is it? And go back to Jerusalem. Do we hear the voice of God today saying, come out of Babylon? A prophetic voice under the return of the fourth angel's message, is it? It is so prophetic that you cannot miss it. In fact, God delineates what will be happening around the world to make sure you understand it's a time to come out of what? Babylon. God doesn't leave you to guess when is the time to come out of Babylon. He says, because it has become a cage of every unclean word. Spirit, do you see this institution becoming a cage of every unclean uh, spirit? Yeah. Or in Uganda, we, it's a better place. Wow. Mothers, do you recognize the sound of Babylon? Are all these institutions becoming a cage of every unclean spirit? And why are you still in Babylon? And your children? Why am I still there? That's the question. And so, the prophecies for this time, just like their mothers did their work, and the fathers, the mothers have to do a time and sit down with their children and tell them, 
we are about to come at the end of Babylonian captivity. Not go there. Come to an end of it. Or are we preparing to go to captivity? Are we preparing to go or to come out? Because we have been in Babylonian captivity for so long, or we have not been in Babylonian captivity. Maybe we are not sure. Have we been in Babylonian captivity? Yeah. I can assure you. You know, sometimes we can say we have been, but you can't prove. In Daniel chapter 7, verse 12, can somebody read it? As concerning the rest of the beasts, is it? Their dominion was done what? Taken away, but their life was prolonged for a season, is it? What is the concern of Daniel in Daniel chapter 7? Daniel sees beasts rising from the sea. Is, it, is that what is happening in Daniel chapter 7? And one beast after the other, and he sees a beast looking like unto a lion. Is that true? And it passes off the scene. It is dominion is done what? It is jurisdiction is taken away, the place that it rules. But as he is beholding that, he sees a second beast unto like what? A bear raised on one side, is it? And it has three bones in its mouth and its soul, eat all you can. If you are told eat all you can, what do you do? You eat, you devour, is it? And so it conquered everything that was on the face of the earth. But that, that did not concern Daniel at all. Do you know that? He was not surprised by that. He is now used to beasts. And the third one comes out of the sea and he sees it is like unto a leopard, is it? And it has four wings. It is swiftness. And it's going conquering to conquer. For a very short period, I won't repeat Daniel 7. I'm just doing it as I go by. But Daniel is also not concerned by that. And then he's shown what? A non-descript beast. He's not told either it's a lion, it's a bear, or it's, he's shown a terrible beast with an iron feet. And it is stumbling. It's not just even consuming. It is stumbling on the residue of everything that remained after the three beasts. And then we are told that the dominion of this other beast was taken away, but their life was prolonged in this one. Are we seeing that? And now you have Babylonians who loves to worship false god, is it? They love to go against that which is called God and worship false god. And it passes, the dominion passes away, but the life, the characteristics are prolonged. And you have this Medo-Persian empire, which is infallible in everything. Whatever it says, that is it. Infallibility doesn't start with Rome. It just inherits that. Whatever the Persians, the Medes and the Persians had written, that was it. Could it be annulled? No, it could not be annulled. And so the dominion passes away, but the character is embedded in the coming dominion. And then you have the kingdom of the leopard, which is it is fantasy, philosophy, licentiousness. You can read that in Acts, where actually the Asians loved nothing but to sit on the market and see what is news and debate about philosophy, about this and that. Their dominion is taken away, but their life, their characteristics, then what? Prolonged in the fourth beast, which Daniel was so concerned with that he said to the Lord, will you explain of this? Because this is not a normal beast. And the Lord shows him how different was this beast. Because the other beasts are conquering horizontally and going. 
But when this one comes to the scene, it is not satisfied with horizontal conquering, is it? It rises to the host of heaven, to the prince of princes and the host of what? Heaven. Now you have a religious political kingdom and that is not the issue at all. Daniel asked God, show me more about it. And he shows, he tells him, this one will rule by crafty and by the policies. It is not a kingdom to force you to do anything. You just, it gives you the policy and you yourself, you have to accept it. Do we see that kingdom working in our lives? Deceitfully, that we cannot recognize we are in this kingdom, is it? When it reaches in Revelation chapter 13, he says that this nondescript beast that we are talking about in Daniel 7, this nondescript beast, the, 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 the whole body was like unto a leopard, and its feet was like the bear, and its mouth was like the mouth of what? The lion, it is the beast rising from the sea, and we understand it is the first beast, that is the Roman hierarchy, and it is paganism and papalism. And the whole world did what? Wandered after, but only those whose names were written in the book of life. Can you escape Babylon? You must escape Medopash. Now, if you will escape Medopasha, you have to escape Greece. And we have escaped Babylon as it were. Is it true? Do you still worship false gods? Huh? Do we still worship false gods? It seems we have escaped from Babylon, is it? What about Medopash? Have we escaped from infallibility? where people stand and the authority, if it's not respected, they cross with the people, is it? You know preachers practice infallibility, mostly, not even the church members. Once a preacher stands here and gives a point, either you agree with it or you are a heretic, is it? Many of us are still stuck in Medopash. Do you know that? And most of the preachers, I want you preachers. I want myself. That is why I don't preach. I'm not a preacher, I'm a teacher. But that is more even harmful. For we are told in James, do not be teachers, you will be judged harshly. A preacher can come here, do some comedy and go his way, whether you accept it or not. But a teacher wants you to follow what they are saying, is it? So I'm in more danger than the preachers. Preachers, you are at least. So escaping Medopasha to me has been a problem, is it? How about the people who are seated listening to me? Have they escaped Medopash? You are a father in a home, you are a mother in a home, and your word is the final one. No one can say anything about it, is it? And you are a child also in that home, your word is the final one. Mother, give me a snack to school or I'm not going. An infallible child, is it? Stucky where? Medopash. But now, the child is not only stuck in Medopasha. After sticking in Medopasha, given the cookie to go to school in Greece, two kingdoms, stuck in two kingdoms. If I'm struggling with this one, who tells you the two? You will be able to contain the two. This was the situation in Daniel chapter one that people found themselves in. And it was the work of the parent to make sure that these children, if they reach that position, they won't be stuck. And so God had to do something to these people in Daniel chapter 1 to make sure that uh, when they reach there, they can remain Christians and come out. In 17.2, it says, Jerusalem was destroyed because the education of her children were done what? Neglected. Now, living at the same time and in the same city with the princess already named were others with the scripture mentions by name. These were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, 
children of Judah of the royal family relatives of Jehoahaz, Jehoakim, and Zedekiah. Now, this is interesting. You have to read it from uh, the two Republicans by um, uh, Eti Jones and Alexander Hislop about the naming of these people. And we understand why they were named like this, is it? Why were named like that? Why, why was their name changed? They may forget their religion because they were named after the gods of where? Babylon, stop calling your child somebody you don't know how he was born and raised. At John is talking about the reformation in the end time. He says that we shall reform in even naming our children. Do you know that? You don't have just to give a name to enemy. And is that biblical, really? When John was being born for a special work, what did God tell Zechariah? Then the child shall be named who? John. And when the relatives say, came and said, this child shall be called Zechariah, the mother said, not so. God has given what? A name. Don't allow people to give your children names. You are naming your children after dead people who had characters that when the child thinks of the name already, the child is fallen before even it starts walking. Names in the end time. And that is why we say parenting accumbents what? The third angel's message. Don't forget child guidance 588.1. That parenting accompanies what? The third angel's message. And it has to come from names and all these things. And so they were named like that so that they may forget their religion and go after the gods of Babylon. At the first siege of Jerusalem in 607 BC, Daniel was not over how many years? 18. Let me see those people who are 18 years and below. 15 to 18, only two. Others are beyond and others too young, is it? But these three Hebrew worthies, when they went to Babylon, they were not over 15 years of age, above the age of Prince Zedekiah, who afterward ruled in Jerusalem. Daniel had a godly mother who knew what? Of the prophecy concerning the destruction of their city. She repeated to her son the words of God, that someday Hebrew children must stand in the heathen court of Babylon. Carefully did this mother teach her son to read the parchments of the scrolls of the prophets. The history of Israel was studied. The story of Nadab and Abu was told and retold. The effect of strong bring was impressed upon the mind. The loss of his own being was studied. Take care of that. The loss of what? His own being what and what? Studied, he knew that excess in eating and drinking would so dull the mind that the voice of God could not be heard. The songs which these Hebrew children sang told the story of God's dealing with his people. What are your children singing? Can you check what your children are singing? Mothers and fathers. What are they singing? Talk to me. What are they singing? The best of Uganda, is it? What shall we do for these children? You think you can do anything for these children? We are told if we are going to save these children, you know the first thing that should be done. How many knows what she says? Take all parents to school. To save these children. So that after learning, they can come and do what? Educate the children. So how many parents are enrolling for standard one? Too old for that. So how can you join standard one as, a, as somebody 60 years? Something must be wrong, is it? Don't you think something is wrong, someone? If we have to take all these parents to school, don't you think the government will say, arrest those people? Because this is not normal. For the children to be at home and the parents to be in school. Don't you think it is, it's madness? 
So what are we going to do? Go hide somewhere without the government knowing. Learn all we can learn. In a few weeks, go back home and teach these children. Parents, are you hearing me? No, no, no one is happy about that. The preacher is meddling with your lives, is it? This is meddling with families, is it? This, these are family affairs. Yeah, continue thinking it's a family affair. But, but I'm coming to that, why it's not a family affair. The songs which these Hebrew children sang told the story of God's dealings with his people. <clears throat> it was in this manner that the image of God was engraven in their hearts. This education was not gained in the schools of that time. Is there an amen? Or we are not satisfied with that. The education was not gotten in the school of that, but we need education from the school of the time, is it? I'll continue repeating this for 21 days until you get it. How long does it take for you to learn? How long does it take the church to learn? As long as it still cannot learn, is it? And so, for they had departed, the schools for that time had departed from the plan of God, but holy mothers, living close to the everlasting father, led their children by precept and example, by word and song, to form characters that will stand the test. It was the age when most of the young men in the capital of Judah were wild and what? Reckless. They were excusing themselves because of their what? Their youth. But God chose from their midst certain ones whom he could trust in foreign land. Daniel and his three companions were snatched from the shelter of home and with others were placed under the charge of Ashpenaz, master of the eunuchs in Babylon. Now can be seen the results of what? Home, training, fewer food, clean thoughts, and physical exercise placed them on the list of children in whom was no blemish, well favored, but what of their intellectual what? Ability. We read on, they had not been educated in the schools of where? Jerusalem, may, much less in those of Babylon. So it's not just sending your child in any school that calls itself Adventist school. Are we together? Or what am I reading? Is that the truth? Yeah. They were not educated at Jerusalem, neither in the schools of where? Babylon. Where is Jerusalem? The center of worship in Israel, is it? These children were not taken there. And we, we stand and say, take our children to Adventist school. Do you know what is being taught there? Huh? Now, if the light in you be darkness, how great are the darkness? Because if we say we, have, we are out of Babylon, is it? And take the curriculum of Babylon and own it. How much darkness in us? More than Babylon, is it? Because if the light in you be darkness, how much darkness? So don't take them to Jerusalem. And you are told, was there not great danger that they lacked in the senses or the essential branches? On examination, these four past are skillful in all wisdom and cunning in all knowledge and understanding science and able to learn a difficult foreign language. God had fulfilled his promise in these children of where? Are, are you seeing the board? Of where? Do you believe that? Hey, do you believe that? Yeah, you know, sometimes we can take a can if children are not responding. They became intelligent. How is this, how this, how is this Daniel one related to our times? Is history going to repeat itself? Are these children going to be taken away from their parents? 
and tested individually, are you sure they will stand? Was the mother of Daniel sure that Daniel will stand? Who knows? The mother was very sure my child will stand because she had done her work thoroughly. And so when the child is going in Babylon, the mother had told Daniel already, you will stand in Babylon and I want you to remain the child of God. And this is what you must do, ABC, to remain a child of God. Did Daniel follow the instruction of the mother? Yes, Daniel followed the instruction of the mother. And when uh, food was brought there, we are told that what? He said, test us. Talk about people who trust God, is it? You won't tell somebody to test you if you don't have a relationship with God. Do you think you can do that? You can do that. It is only when you have a relationship with God that you can tell somebody, do what? Test me. And we are about to be tested individually. Daniel chapter one has to repeat in our time. And you know what the devil says? Let us go to PK184 and see what the devil says really. Are we learning, friends? Can you make me a co-host? I want to share the screen. Make me a co-host. Thank you so much. I want you to see this. The same thing that uh, they were tested in Daniel chapter 1 is coming again in Revelation chapter 13, that there is no buying and doing what? And selling. And when that time reaches, look at the first thing that the devil will do to the children of God. This is PK 184.2, if you are following along. How many minutes do I have? I don't want to delay people for lunch. I'm not going to be responsible for any sick person. Huh? So how many minutes do I have? 11 minutes. How time runs fast. You will think that we are here for 21 days when we are gone. Thus the world will become mine. Are we together? I will rule, I'll be the ruler of the earth, the prince of the world. I'll so control the minds under my power that God's Sabbath shall be a special object of what? Content, a sign. I'll make the observant of the seventh day a sign of disloyalty to the authorities of the earth. Human laws will be made so stringent that men and women will not dare observe the seventh day Sabbath for fear of doing what? Wanding, food and what? Clothing. They will join with the world in transgressing God's law. The earth will be holy under my dominion. The whole world wandered after the word. The beast. Now, you want to tell me the crisis of food and cloth is that severe? Huh? We are not talking about even anything else, but clothing. Eh? You mean this issue of cloth is so severe? And people may think that it is not just about buying and selling. Let me tell you something about this issue of uh, the issue of clothing and food. Maybe here in Uganda, you don't have a crisis. We have a crisis, okay? If you are in Uganda, don't leave. This is the best place to be. You see what the devil has done on the market? Can you find there an Adventist cloth? And we are told because of the clothing, people will not worship God on Sabbath, is it? Can it be possible you can be in church to worship God on Sabbath and you are not worshiping him because of the clothing? Huh? Now we don't want to make a dress an issue here, is it? No, don't step on people's toes. It's not good to hurt people, is it? You are on the Sabbath, but not worshiping God because of what? No. 
the cloth, is it? And still you can be inside the Sabbath, but because of your food, you are not worshiping God. Is that true? And then the crisis comes, and you have to remember COVID. COVID has just gone and we are saying, oh, we are safe, is it? Do you know that people killed lines to buy food during COVID crisis? Here in Uganda, there was a lot of food stored in the house. Did you queue lines to buy food? Oh, these people didn't queue to buy food. In Kenya, there was a crisis. You could not even move into another province to look for food. You had to remain in your own province. That is how severe the crisis was, that I could not pass from Western to go to Nyanza to look for food. If you are found in Western, you will remain in Western with the food in Western. If you are in Nyanza, you will be in Nyanza with the food in Western. Do you think the crisis was a simple one? And people could kill line. And when you reach at the counter, you are told you cannot buy two, uh, 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 two packets of flour. You only have one. And how many children are you having? Now, if you have many, just ask the Lord to train their stomachs. This, this, you know, if you don't train them, the crisis that was in Samaria, one mother cooks a child and another one, the, other, the next time he's going to cook a child and this one has hidden the child that she cooked. The children are going to eat you in a way, or you are going to eat your own children when the crisis. You know, people joke about these things. In Great Conrovers chapter one, we are told in the besieging of uh, Jerusalem, the mothers could kill their children and hide them under the, their clothes so that no one could see them and at night they could eat them. Now we can say, not in my day, I can't eat my child. Is that so? How many are sure about that? Yeah, if your mother is here, just look at her very well. Don't trust her minute. When the crisis breaks, look for a way, place to go. Unless she's a Christian. And you can't know if she's a Christian. Just run for your life. Because at that time, there is no relative. You just run. But if she's a Christian and you are a Christian, you will not run away. Because you don't want to be separated at that time with the mother. But can a mother forget her children? So you think you cannot eat them? Forgetting you can, but eating them you cannot. We are told that the mothers who are so tender for their children ate them. And do you know why? Because the Romans could come, read the history, the Fox Matthias book, and the child could be held like this, and with a seesaw, the child starts to be split in between. Who can look to a child being split with a seesaw like that? You have a courage to do that. To look at your child when she's split in between. From the head to the leg. And the child is crying slowly by slowly. Who can do that? So what do you do? Eat her as early as possible. The crisis is there, is it? For the one of food and clothing. The crisis will so, be so severe. Just the way the crisis, you know, when people look at Daniel chapter one, they say that was not a crisis. Was it a crisis? About food, what, is it a crisis? What if Daniel, after being tested for 10 days, could not be bet 10 times better than these people? What could have happened? It, will, it was a death, a life and death what? issue. And so even in the end time, in Revelation chapter 13, is a death and life what? Issue and people must be prepared for that. We read Daniel chapter 1 and just pass it over that. We say, oh, this one is a little bit easier. Let us go to Daniel chapter 5 or Daniel chapter 3 where they are seen in a, a furnace of fire. But the story of Daniel chapter 3, chapter 5, and the other starts in Daniel chapter 1, where actually the mothers had to train their parents. Uh, the, 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 uh, the parents had to train their children. And so we are told as we reach the stream of the time in the end time, 
these books will be repeated. These chapters will be repeated in our life for everyone to be tested individually. And so let me close with the verse because I want to be right on time. In the, in the, in the book of Jeremiah, I haven't even touched the issue of parenting because I'll come back before I go to chapter two and just establish the issue of parenting, continue where I left uh, tomorrow. The book of uh, Jeremiah, and uh, we are looking at a verse. Jeremiah chapter 12. In the COVID crisis, in the issue of food, no food, you have to kill for food, and you only have one packet of flour to buy in Kenya and in other countries. But do you know that in other countries it was so severe that you could not even get out of the house, is it? Yeah, to get something to eat. I, I, I thank God that in Uganda you didn't have a crisis other places, but you are coming to be tested right now. Do you know you are coming to be tested? Your president refused LGBTQ, do you know that? What, what happened? Withdrawal of the World Bank. Do you know what is next? Withdrawal of IMF, what next? Inflation, because you won't be importing anything outside this country if you continue to reject LGBTQ. Do you know that? You won't import and you won't export. Do you know how the crisis is going to be? The rule will be any nation connected to Uganda also support cattle. Do you think Kenya will sell you food? We won't sell you food. Okay? But we can welcome you to come there while still the borders are open. And so we are told in Jeremiah 12, 5, if thou hast run with the footmen and they have wearied thee, then how canst thou contend with horses? And if in the land of peace wherein thou trusted, they wearied thee, then how will thou do in the swelling of the word of Jordan? And uh, in this crisis that uh, is coming of Daniel, chapter one, which we are already in, people are being tested. I pray that uh, we will have a people who will stand, amen? We cannot give up. Do you think we can give up? This is not the time to give up. We are told this is the time from the coldness of others, we must gather warmth from the coldness of others, is it? Raise the standard high, raise the banner high, and show what is coming to happen to this world. While people are asleep and saying Babylon is where we shall be, you have to decide right now you are coming out of Babylon. And it has to start with the parents. Then we can go to the children. And we shall be looking in the family life in the book of Daniel chapter 1. And how we can restore the blueprint of Daniel chapter 1 because God must have a church that will stand true to him during investigative what? Judgment. Not a few individuals here and there speaking this and this, but a church true to it is calling. May the Lord bless us and uh, give us the courage to go through this crisis. Shall we pray? Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we need you more than ever before. Lord, it were as if the world is ready, but only your people. And uh, what you can do, Lord, what is impossible with man, it is possible with you. And so we want to be found among us, that little company that shall be pressing forward and not retracting their steps. Thank you for your children who have gathered in this place, that Lord, you may minister unto them. Minister through me and for me, unto them that, Lord, they may be educated 
in spiritual things, and they may be able to stand when the question is asked, who shall be able to stand? We may have a people standing with the Lamb of God on Mount Zion. And so thank you, Lord, for this Sabbath. All the truth you shall reveal unto us, give us the courage to walk in them. In the precious name of thy Son, we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, may, may the Lord continue blessing us. May the Lord be with us. The people who are here and the people who are online, are we happy to be here? May God touch our hearts once again. Amen.